Hello there, World of Tankers. Welcome back to another one of my videos. I am Drudels Blitz, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the new Japanese tank destroyer line. And the reason I wanted to make a video on this today is because I've been seeing more and more information uh, being released over my Discord servers, Newsbot, and just other stuff uh, on these Japanese tank destroyers. I've been seeing a couple of them in testing now from my fellow Pramo mates and everything else like that. So I wanted to make a little bit of an informative video today, and also I wanted to speak a little bit about my own opinion on the Japanese tank destroyer line and what it's actually going to be doing for the Blitz game and the community. By the time you are watching this video, I'm guessing pretty much all of you guys know a lot about these tanks already. You've been keeping up to date with all the other YouTubers. You know, some YouTubers were posting videos on the Hori three weeks ago. So I'm guessing a lot of you do know a lot about the tanks, but I'm still going to be doing a basic rundown of them just in case you haven't been caught up completely or you just want to find out a little bit more of information about them that you possibly don't know. So the way this line is going to work, I'm not 100% sure if it's going to branch off of the Cheeto or the Chi Ri, but I am guessing it's going to come off of the Chi Ri. It's going to branch straight off because this line starts at tier 7 and then it goes all the way through to tier 10. And I know the tier 10's name only, which is going to be the Ho Ri. There has not been any information released on the names of the tier 8 through 7 except pictures. Now, when you do take a look at the Tier 7, which I'll bring up a little picture of, from my personal opinion, I think that these are the ugliest tanks that Blitz has ever put into the game, and it just puts a whole new layer of toppings over the WZ-113 GFT. However, they may be ugly, but the question is, how effective are they going to be on the battlefield, and are they going to be worth getting? Now, as I said, you can see the picture of the Tier 7 here, and if you take a look at the back of it, you can see the exhaust pipes, which look exactly identical to the Cheeto Tier 6. So my guess is that this tank is based off of the Cheeto hull, so it's probably not going to be super, super heavily armored. However, when you take a look at the front of it where the gun is, that's a very, very large gun mantlet. And it may be really ugly, I don't know why it's just this big square sticking out of the front of the vehicle, but I'm guessing that it's actually going to be quite armored in the front plate of this tank. You can see that it looks like a pretty thick plate overall through the front of it. Now my guess, lower plate, not going to have much armor, just the same as a Cheeto probably. The sides are going to be completely wafer thin. Uh, but this is one thing that really does, you know, continue up through the tiers. Again, you take a look at the tier 8. You can see right next to the gun mantlet, that looks like a very thick sheet of metal. I'm guessing that these tanks on the front, just like the Hori, and I'll be bringing up the armor profile of the Hori in a little bit, but I'm guessing they're going to have very, very good armor in the front. You can see there's some pretty steep angles over the edges. However, you do take a look, and it looks like this hull is based off of the Chiri tank. So I'm guessing that the Tier 7 is based off the Tier 6 tank, and then the Tier 8 tank destroyer is based off of the Ch Tier 7 medium tank. So I'm guessing that that's how these two are going to look. But there is one thing you'll notice about all these vehicles when you do look at them, and that's the gun. They have very, very large guns. And I'm guessing they are going to be very effective on the battlefield. And as well, when you take a look at them, they are fairly large vehicles. You know, I was playing up against one of these Hori's uh, when a, Fr a Prambo guy was running it, and I was running my E100. That tank is just as big as an E100, if not longer. It is a super long tank. And it's kind of funky seeing them run around the map because they actually are pretty quick. They've got pretty beefy engines, so I'm not sure how these are going to roll out on the battlefield. Now when we take a look at the Tier 9, you can see it actually does change in appearance quite a bit. Instead of having this big boxy Cheeto Cheery uh, structure look, it now has this very smooth and uniform just giant slant on the front of the tank. And I'm guessing that it's going to be a very, very tough vehicle to penetrate when aiming at that. I'm guessing it's going to be very, very well armored because the Tier 10 is also a super, super well armored tank. And I was actually really surprised when I went up against the Tier 10 to see just how armored it is. Because not only is it very well armored, but it's also very, very quick. But there is one thing I did notice about this tank, and it has no gun mantlet. So my question is, how far is this tank going to be able to traverse the gun right and left? Or even gun depression, it might not have really any, because... You can really see, it looks from the picture that they've given us, it's not going to be able to aim that far, so I'm not sure how flexible this tank is going to be on the battlefield, but I definitely am excited for this one alone because it looks like it's going to have a pretty nasty gun, it's going to be pretty quick, and it looks like it's got some nice armor angling. 
And when we jump up just one more final time, we get to the tier 10 being the Hori. Now, all the statistics and parameters I'm going to be reading off for you guys are from Blitz Hanger currently. I'm actually going to put the link to this uh, website in the description down below, just in case any of you guys want to look at the tank statistics yourself. Uh, but I'm just going to be doing a little brief overview on the tank statistics and voicing my opinion on the whole line then. So, first of all, you can see the little clip of the Hori I am playing, and it looks exactly like the tier 8 and the tier 7. I'm actually not sure why they made the tier 9 look so far from the tier 8 and 7 and 10 because all the other tanks look exactly the same. There's not really any differences except for like a little bit of the gun placement and other things like that, but really the tier 9 looks completely different compared to the other vehicles. So I'm thinking they possibly did that just to make the line have a little bit more diversity because if they didn't do that, it'd be like sort of just grinding up the same thing over and over and over. However, that is just one little thing I did notice and I thought it was quite kind of odd. However, back to the Ho Re, when you take a look at it, the first thing you probably notice is the gun, because it is just this huge monstrous thing sticking out of the vehicle. And you'll probably think, wow, could this be 170mm cannon, 180mm cannon even mounted on this tank? Well, no. In fact, it's actually not as large as you probably think. It's a 150mm cannon, capable of dealing 560 average damage. Which, yeah, that's not a crazy amount of damage. I really was expecting this gun to be a lot more menacing than it really is. However, one good thing it does get is a pretty good damage run it of 3,325. However, I was scrolling through the ammo types on this tank, and I noticed something that really kind of disturbed me about this vehicle. If you load up the premium ammunition on this tank, it has 380mm penetration and 545 average damage. Now, if you remember, about 10 seconds ago, I said the standard ammunition does 560 average damage, which means the premium ammo loses 15 damage per shot. That's it which pretty much means that you can fire non-stop premium ammo in this vehicle and lose almost none of your damage per minute. Literally, you're losing like 90. It's not anything. And I really think this is a stupid thing Wargaming is going to do if they do continue this way, because it's going to not only promote players to only spam premium ammo in this tank, but it's just going to give this just an unfair advantage over other players where, let's say you're running an E100, you're going to lose quite a bit more damage in your shot than you are in the Hori. And not to mention, I've played against it. It's not a bad tank. So I don't know why Wargaming would do something like that. It's just a really stupid idea in my opinion. I don't get why they couldn't have given it a 155mm cannon or something like that, 640 damage, and then made the secondary do like 560. But that is my personal opinion. Um, but one good thing about the tank is the reload, 10.10 .10 second reload, that is very, very nice. It outclasses pretty much all the other tier 10 tank destroyers that do have that 155 or 152 millimeter cannon. Uh, so that is one really nice thing, is that you lose a little bit of alpha damage, but you gain quite a bit in reload time. Not to mention your aiming time is excellent, 1.9 seconds. Dispersion even better at .308, some of the best dispersion values I've ever seen in tier 10. Even for some medium tanks, that's still really, really good dispersion. Dispersion factors on moving, rotating, everything is really, really good on the vehicle. Gun depression and elevation, though, not super good. It's 6 degrees of gun depression and 14 degrees of gun elevation. And this is quite a tall vehicle, so trying to get your gun depression values to work on this tank because it is so long and so tall can be quite funky in some certain scenarios. However, there is one thing that this tank does not get let down in, and that is the speed. 50 kilometers per hour forward and 20 backwards, which pretty much makes this tank almost like an E50M tank destroyer. It's like the Fosh pretty much on speed, so it's very, very quick. And since it weighs 60 tons, very good at ramming as well, I'm going to guess, because that front is a very, very thick plate, so it's going to take quite a bit of damage off medium tanks or lightly armored vehicles that you do end up ramming. So that is pretty much all the statistics on the vehicle. However, the most important thing that probably you all also want to hear about is the armor profile. Because if this tank based off of the Chi Ri, because as it says in the name is the um you know the Ho Ri, it's probably not going to have a super thick armor profile. However, you would actually be quite uh surprised to find out how thick it is. The you know, lower part of the tank, the big middle plate, is the weakest part on the entire vehicle. As you can see, I've loaded up Armor Inspector, 
and that plate alone is about 175 thick, and yeah, that is very, very weak. Thankfully, though, you're not going to be able to hit any HE in there. It's just going to be pretty much an auto pen for any vehicle, even Tier 9s that are stock, to penetrate. However, other than that, there's really no weaknesses on the front of this tank. The upper part of it's around 256, 260 millimeters thick. The entire superstructure of it's around 250 thick. The gun mantlet, about 252. Overall, it's a very, very well armored tank. However, the sides are just completely awful. 92 millimeters on the entire side thick. The track wheel, you're going to be penned pretty much every time through it. It's got the side of pretty much what you'd expect uh, being off based off of the tree. The rear, 60 millimeters. If you're running a Sheridan, I honestly think that this will be just a piece of cake to take apart. And not to mention, as I said before, the front's armored, but yeah, it's not going to be super armored when you load your heat ammo or whatever you have on your premium ammo on your vehicles, and the entire tank is literally able to be they don't have gun mantlets, so you can literally shoot right at the gun, and you're going to penetrate every single time. So that is a huge weakness with this vehicle, which I'm guessing a lot of people are going to struggle if they do pull out this tank. And again, it's just so weird looking. It's a very, very, very tall tank, very easy to shoot. I'm guessing that, to be honest, it's not going to be that popular of a line. And this is where it comes to my final opinion that I've been wanting to talk about the whole video, is that I honestly think Wargaming is making a huge mistake bringing these tanks into the game. Now, obviously, they've spent a lot of time now de developing these tanks, a lot of money, uh, and I honestly think that they screwed up big time. This, First of all, the tanks are ugly. Even if you do like the look of it, not a lot of people are going to want to run this tank. It's just a really ugly vehicle. Why would you go for this when you could go for a Fosh, an Object 263? There's just a lot of nicer looking, better options in my opinion. Second of all, Wargaming gave this tank pretty much the ability to fire premium ammo at anybody it likes without having any penalties. So now Wargaming is pretty much promoting seal clubbing with or not seal clubbing, but just almost abusing the ammo. If some players just, you know, let's say you're a bad, bad player at this game and you can't pen anybody. So instead of just using skill, learning how to play the game, you can just buy this tank and then pretty much spam premium ammo, which does 380 millimeters of pen at anybody you do go up against. And the final thing is, if you guys remember, the last tank destroyer line released was the WZ-113GFT. And currently that is the least popular line in the entire game. Every other line has just thousands of more players playing them every single day. And that's because nobody cares about the WZ. It's an ugly tank. It's a big box. It's okay, but 268 is a better tank. And my question is, why would you want to grind for this tank? I said it's ugly. There's really no point for it. It's just this ugly box. I honestly think that this is going to be a terrible decision. Nobody's going to grind down this line. Now that is my opinion, but I'm guessing a lot of you guys are going to agree with me that you wouldn't want to get this tank. Now, of course, if you're a collector like me and you want to get it just because you can, you're obviously going to get it. But as soon as you get it, it's going to sit in your garage. You're not going to play it. It's just this ugly, awful tank. And I was thinking, why couldn't Wargaming, you know, add the Emil? If you guys know what the Emil is, it's a Swedish auto-loading heavy tank, 12 degrees of gun depression, very quick, awesome turret armor. Why couldn't they add a tank like that to Blitz? Why couldn't they add, you know, just any other tier 10 vehicle that's super exciting to go for? They could have gone for the Swedish tank destroyers, probably one of the most wanted lines in the entire game. I don't understand what Wargaming thinks when they come with these ideas. There are so many other ideas they could have done where a lot more people would have been excited to go for them, but I honestly have no clue what made them come up with this idea, even because these tanks don't exist on PC. But that is my opinion. I just wanted to say that I honestly think this is a really bad idea and they're wasting so much time designing this line when they could be doing something so more important. But other than that, guys, I just wanted to thank you for watching this video, dealing with me, talk about all the tanks, ranting about them, everything else in general. And I hope you guys did enjoy it. As always, if you did, make sure to smash that like button. And if you agree with me, you know, hit the like button. If you disagree with my opinion, hit that downvote button. Let me know in the comments down below. Yell at me, I don't care. It just gives me something to do, lets me think, have an open mind. Sometimes I'll even make a you know follow-up video to talk about what the comments do say. So always make sure you do comment. It really does actually help me a lot to figure out what you guys are currently thinking. But other than that, guys, as always, make sure to subscribe, enjoy it, and I'll see you in the next one.